I thought this would be a fun video, so I kind of want to talk about hospital roommates. <laughs> All right, so when I first was admitted to the hospital for my GJ tube surgery, I had one of the best hospital roommates I have ever had. She was amazing. She was diagnosed with, um, I can't remember what it was off the top of my head, but she was diagnosed with a chronic illness when she was 19. And she told me that the doctors told her she wasn't gonna be able to have kids and all this and that. And she was telling me how she had kids, how like she has grandkids now. And like she, you know, I just love talking to her. She was great, she was encouraging because I was just had gotten diagnosed, just gotten, you know, all this stuff. And um, they had just admitted me to the hospital for the first ever time. So it was really nice getting that roommate. The next roommate they, they brought in, poor lady, she was really old and I had just gotten my GJ tube surgery. So I was in immense amounts of pain, like immense amounts of pain, too much pain. And uh, she kept trying to talk to me while I'm throwing up. She's like, it's okay, sweetie. And she'd say the same stories over and over again, like, I met the Rockefellers and I hope you're okay. I was a pediatric nurse and I like going on and on and she's like, it's okay, just breathe through the pain. And I'm like, honey, like, I don't want to hear from you right now. I'm trying to like, just stay focused on not going insane with the amount of pain that I'm in. She kept trying to talk to me and tell the same stories and I'm just like, I don't want to talk right now. And for me being the person that I am, I didn't feel like I could tell her to be like quiet because she was just being so nice. And I just was like, I know you're trying to be nice, but I just need silence and like quiet and just to focus on my own stuff right now. So then, you know, I'm finally discharged. I end up back in the hospital a few weeks later because I wasn't tolerating my tube fees. All this stuff was going on. I was still in immense amounts of pain. So they admit me to the hospital to do TPN. And they put me in a room with this really, really, really old lady. Who starts sundowning in the middle of the night, which if you don't know what sundowning is, it's basically like in the middle of the night, you just kind of forget everything. And they don't know where they are. They're delusional, all that sort of stuff. Um, so she, it's straight out of a horror movie, I'm telling you. Like she gets up and she, there's a mirror in the, like at the end of my bed, right? And she gets up, she walks to the mirror and she's just standing there, staring at herself in the mirror. And she does this for us all like 25 minutes. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? This lady is freaking me out. So then, she leaves the mirror, goes out into the hallway, and just stands right outside of our door, staring straight ahead. And I'm like, Lord, I'm gonna get murdered. I'm gonna get murdered. This is my end. Like, I'm in the hospital. I'm gonna get murdered by this old lady. Like, this is straight out of The Visit, you know? Like, if you've ever seen The Visit, it's an M. Night Shyamalan movie. <laughs> it's like, oh my Lord. And so a nurse comes up to her, and, and, she, and the nurse is like, ma'am are you okay like what are you doing and she's like I'm going on a Sunday stroll and I'm just like oh no you're not sweetie oh honey oh then it gets worse oh then it gets worse so the nurse guides her back into her bed and you know like I try to go back to sleep a few a few hours later like an hour or two later the nurse comes back in she has to go to the bathroom and she's not allowed to get up and go to the bathroom on her own. The nurse comes in and they're trying to get her out of bed and she keeps thinking she's on the toilet. She's not on the toilet. So she ends up going number two and number one all over the floor in the bathroom, those poor nurses. And they're yelling at her the entire time, like, please sit on the toilet, you're not on the toilet. And she's saying, yes, I am, I'm in too much pain. Blah, 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 blah. And she's like yelling at the nurses, not listening to them, refusing to like, even get any help from them. She's like yelling at them, you're hurting me, you're hurting me. And they're like barely holding her. And it's like this whole thing. And I'm just hearing screaming from the bathroom. And I'm just like, oh my Lordy, have mercy. Can I not get sleep? It's three in the morning. And uh, suffice it to say, I did not get a lot of sleep that night because they had to come back in multiple times because this lady kept having to poop her pants. Sorry if that was too much information for you. But, uh, 
So then, you know, after not getting a good night's sleep and dealing with all this yelling and the lady not listening to the nurses, the doctors come by the next morning for my roommate. Not me. I'm fine. Like I said, like, I can up and walk around. I'm on TPN. I'm not in any pain. Like, I'm, I'm fine. Other than the fact that I'm in the hospital for malnutrition. But, so, you know, they're dealing with her. They come in. There's, like, six people surrounding her doing an enema at like eight in the morning. And I'm like, yo, I just barely slept last night. Y'all are doing an enema on her. Do I to say it gets messy, smelly, and blood? So like, then they start calling the code blue. I don't know if you know what a code blue is. It's like serious, like shit. Like she's in, you know, needs immediate attention, medical attention. So I'm like, shit, I'm, and then they like, death was mentioned. And at this point I'm like, you know, I can't, I can't, I cannot deal with this anymore. I'm getting the hell out. So I, me, I unplug my IV pull from the bag with all the stuff hanging off it, which I got quite a few bags hanging off of it. And I just grab it and I just walk straight out the door. I'm like, I cannot deal with this. I am getting the hell out of this room. And I go to the front desk and I'm like, so can I get another room? And they're like, yeah, we'll try to see about getting you another room. I was like, okay, thank you, because I cannot be in there. And they're like, okay, go to the waiting room and we'll let all your nurses know that you're in the waiting room. And I was like, okay, cool. So I go sit in the waiting room because uh, I'm not dealing with this. Eventually they end up moving her to an ICU floor and I get the room to myself. Goodness. But that was probably the worst experience with a husband or roommate I've ever had. The other ones are just like old ladies that try to talk to you and then you know all of their health information. I'm always the youngest patient on the floor and I just don't like sharing a room. That's my biggest hospital roommate story. I thought I'd share it with you and you guys would find it interesting. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch y'all later. Stay strong. Bye.